Welcome to Latin for Non-Romans, or as I like to call it, Latin for Barbarians. The first conjugation. The verb. But what is a verb? A verb is a word used for describing an action. We call these doing words. Now, we say Latin is an inflected language. It likes to wrap every word up in a neat little package, and the verb is no exception. A verb can provide us vital clues about a sentence. For example, the endings tell us the person, who is doing the action, number, how many of us are there, tense, when are we doing it, voice, active or passive, and finally mood, indicative or subjunctive. Just like nouns, Latin verbs can be categorized into various types. We call these types conjugations. These classifications are based on theme vowels, a, e, short e, and i, and the behavior of the verbs in the present system. The first conjugation includes all verbs which add a thematic vowel a to the root to form the present stem. Why are principal parts so critical to the formation of our verb? Because principal parts provide us with a starting place for the conjugation of our verb. The first principal part, pugno, is the present active indicative, first person singular, I fight. The second principal part is pugnare, the present active infinitive. It provides you with the stem, pugn. The theme vowel, a, and if you take off the re, you attach your personal endings. The third principal part, pugnawi, again, if you take off the i, you're left with the stem for the perfect system. Finally, the fourth principal part is the perfect passive participle. To form the present tense, we take the second principal part, pugnare, the infinitive, Remove the RE ending, keeping the theme vowel A, and add your personal endings, OST, MUSTIS, INT. One possible mnemonic device to help you remember this is OS to MUS, tisn't? And here's what the present would look like, starting with the first person singular, PUGNO, I fight. Second person singular, pugnas, you fight. Third person singular, pugnat, he, she, or it fights. First person plural, pugnamus, we fight. Second person plural, pugnatis, you all fight. Third person plural, pugnant, they fight. Now we turn to the imperfect. This is an incomplete action happening in the past. So what we're doing is we're keeping the stem, adding the theme vowel A, and personal endings appropriate to the imperfect bam bas bot, bamas botis bont. Now if we look to the future, we'll notice that we still have that stem plus our theme vowel A, but we've changed the endings to bo bis bit, bemus bitis bunt. Now we come to the perfect system, and if you'll notice, we're looking at the third principal part, pugnawi. What we'll do, take off the I, keep the stem of the perfect, pugnaw, and you're going to apply your personal endings, e isti it, imis istis erunt. For example, first person singular, pugnawi, I fought. Second person singular, pugnawisti, you fought. Third person singular, pugnawit, he, she, or it fought. First person plural, pugnawimus, we fought. Second person plural, pugnawistis. Third person plural, pugnawerent. 
Now your blue perfect is going to look a little bit familiar. Uh, you're going to keep the stem pug now, but you're going to apply the imperfect of the verb to be, sum. So those endings are in the imperfect aram, aras, arat, aramos, aratus, arant. Notice that the pluperfect, like the perfect, is in the past, but you're applying the word had. So for example, instead of I fought, which would be perfect, you're using I had fought, which makes it even further back in the past. To wrap things up, we come to the future perfect. And as you can see, we have that perfect stem, pugnau. But we're going to add the endings for the verb to be sum in the future. And those are aro, aris, arit, arimus, aritis, arint. There's no point in reduplicating your efforts. If you know the verb to be, then you're already ahead of the game. Thank you all for joining me today for Latin for Non-Romans. I look forward to seeing everyone next time.